Now here's a battle that has been going on for ages. Two Indian brands who have always thought out of the box and created a medium for people to enjoy the thrill, the excitement and the adrenaline rush that a motorcycle has on offer. If one can relate to brand Pulsar as Captain America, a brand that follows its heart and is more about emotion, then we have the Apache RTR, a bike that I can relate to as the Black Panther because it's all about sophistication and science and technology and it's more about devotion. So this is an epic battle of two mega brands who have believed in themselves, brands who have proved their worth and raced to the top and have made our nation proud by hoisting the Indian flag high up on the world stage. Two brands who have given the Japanese giants a run for their money here in our market. Bajaj Pulsar 160NS ABS versus Stevius Apache RTR 164V ABS. So who will come out victorious at the end of this battle? Let's dive straight into this comparo. So let's start with the design. First, the Pulsar 160NS. The NS gets the same design as its elder sibling, the 200NS. Every design element is absolutely identical, which is what lends the bike a premium feel and an ahead of its segment looks. The design is perfectly cohesive. It looks modern and fresh and also features the muscular tank, which is a hallmark design element of the Pulsar lineage. The RTR 164V design is again clearly derived from its 200cc sibling, the RTR 204V, which actually is based on the Draken concept showcased way back at the 2014 Auto Expo. The design of the RTR is sharper with sharper cuts and creases, the bodywork is more streamlined and the overall design silhouette oozes a sharpshooter look. Both the designs look visually appealing and radical and powerful and as people say looks are purely subjective so it all boils down to your personal preference when it comes to the design. I personally however love the way the 160NS looks especially in this red paint scheme. Next talking about fit and finish the overall build quality does feel very premium and impressive for both the bikes. However, the RTR 164V Speedo console feels much more up to date with a full digital display. Also, the fuel injected model of the RTR 164V gets a gear position indicator, top speed recorder, a 0 to 60 timer, which the 160NS doesn't. The switch gear is neatly laid out for both the bikes, but I like the aluminium clutch and brake levers on the RTR compared to the standard ones on the NS. The seat is comfortably laid out for both. The NS gets a split seat layout, which might not be easily accessible for ladies, whereas the RTR gets a single seat layout that offers adequate room for the rider as well as the pillion, while also making it easily accessible for ladies. Also, the seat cushioning seems to be of superior quality on the RTR. Next, talking about the brakes. Both the bikes get single channel ABS as standard now which means ABS is operational only on the front wheel. Both the bikes offer impressive braking performance. The RTR scores a 62 to 0 km per hour timing of just 1.7 seconds whereas the Pulsar 160NS scores a 64 to 0 km per hour timing of just 1.6 seconds. So the braking is better and slightly more confidence inspiring on the 160NS compared to the RTR. Now this is surprising because the RTR gets a larger 270mm front disc as opposed to I think a 260mm or a 240mm front disc of the NS because the info on the official 160NS site is all messed up. So it's better to clarify that with your local Bajaj dealer. The Pulsar however gets a larger 230mm rear disc compared to the 200mm rear disc of the RTR. Now please note that both the bikes use pedal discs front and rear which offer better heat dissipation and overall better braking performance. Talking about the suspension, both the bikes get telescopic forks up front and both offer a good front end feel. The rear monoshock for the Pulsar is a gas charged one whereas for the RTR we get race tuned Showa suspension which is among the best in the world. So both the bikes offer good high speed stability because the rear monoshocks hold up really well even post triple digit speeds. 
but the seat is slightly harder on the pulsar so the rtr with a better quality seat and ideally tuned suspension offers slightly better comfort while riding through the city now talking about the engine powering the 160 ns is a single cylinder four stroke four valve oil cooled 160.3 cc engine that puts out 15.5 ps of max power at 8500 rpm and 14.6 newton meters of max torque at 6500 rpm we get a five speed gearbox the rtr 164v also comes powered by a single cylinder four stroke four valve oil cooled 159.7 cc engine that puts out 16.5 ps of max power at 8000 rpm and 14.8 newton meters of max torque at 6500 rpm we get a five speed gearbox here as well now please note that the rtr also gets a fuel injected variant that puts out 16.8 ps of max power for the 160 ns unfortunately there's no fi variant out yet so this is the added level of flexibility and choice that the RTR has on offer. Now we can also see that the RTR 164V puts out nearly 1 PS of more power and 0.2 Newton meters of more torque compared to the Pulsar. As far as weight is concerned, both the bikes weigh the same at 145 kg wet and both the bikes also get the same tank capacity at 12 liters. Also please note that the seat height of the Pulsar 160NS is slightly higher than that of the RTR. Seat height for the RTR is 800mm but for the 160NS it is 805mm so average height riders would feel slightly more confident and comfortable on the RTR because they can put their feet down easily on the RTR. Talking about the performance, both the bikes are equally amazing though the state of tune of each bike is different. The RTR gets a slightly bass heavy exhaust note whereas the NS gets similar tuning like that of the 200NS, more like the KTM kind of sound. The acceleration is good and energetic, both the bikes offer an engaging riding experience. Now there's hardly anything to give and take between these two bikes because they are so closely matched and yet they try to outsmart one another. It's like Captain America and the Black Panther fighting it out at the airport battle scene in the Civil War movie. The 160NS with its perimeter frame offers absolutely brilliant handling and with the center of gravity being perfectly sorted out with an underbelly exhaust and the rear monoshock, the NS offers perfect balance and control. Now the RTR gets a double cradle split synchro stiff chassis and we also get race tuned Showa suspension at the back. Now this lends the bike superb high speed stability but somehow I personally feel all things put together be it flickability through city streets or highway cruising or even blasting through the empty stretches the 160NS just manages to marginally mind you just marginally overshadow the RTR 164V maybe it's the clip-on handlebar that gives you slightly more confidence on the NS as you steer the bike because the RTR gets a standard flat bar handlebar however both these bikes are absolutely explosive in terms of power delivery thanks to the four valve engine that allows their engines to rev freely and breathe easy even at higher rpms both the bikes offer equal amount of intensity and adrenaline rush something that both pulsar as well as rtr fanboys hope for from their respective brands the clutch feel is light and easy for both the bikes gear shifts happen smoothly and the throttle action is also light and effortless not putting too much pressure on your palms for both of these bikes so overall irrespective of either bikes that you would end up choosing you would be going wrong because both of them are right up there with the best be it handling build quality fit and finish comfort equipment design or even performance I'm so glad that two Indian manufacturers are raising the bar of expectation in this segment not only in our market but also around the world now if I were to choose one winner among the two I would say it has to be the RTR 164V because you have to give it to TVS just for the sake of trying to give this bike almost everything they've got and when you see a manufacturer doing that you can't help but stand up and appreciate the effort. So what makes the RTR a winner here is the variety and customization options that we get along with it. We get to choose from a carb variant or a fuel injected variant. We also get to choose optional Pirelli tires which is outstanding. We get world class Showa suspension and a double barrel exhaust that serves as the perfect background score for all the intensity and fun that this bike has on offer and to top it all off the RTR enjoys the price advantage the carbureted ABS dual disc variant is priced at rupees 92,101 ex showroom Hyderabad whereas the 160NS is priced at rupees 92,826 mileage wise I believe both the bikes will offer around the same figure at around 45 kmpl so I guess this wraps up my comparo video I just hope you found this video useful until next time this is Dino saying ciao take care god bless and ride safe